to a lesson video and as always if you want my videos all on one spot just subscribe to my channel. So if you watched section 19.1 we talked a little bit about mirrors so now we're going to talk about lenses. So light usually travels in straight lines however as we've discussed in previous videos when light enters a new medium at an angle the change in speed causes the light to bend or refract. Okay, so we've discussed refraction now in a couple of different lesson videos. So when light enters the new medium at an angle, it slows one side of it down, and so then in that case, it starts bending the light weight. How much the speed of light ray slows as it enters a new material depends on the material's index of refraction. So what's that? Well, the index of refraction for a material is the ratio of the speed of light in a vacuum, which is 3.0 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, hopefully you remember that, speed of light, um, to the speed of light in the material. A material with a low index of refraction causes light to slow and refract very little. So the higher the index of refraction, the more bending the light experiences. So this is just an example of a list of index of refraction of different items. And so, of course, in a vacuum is 1, because it's ratio of light in a vacuum to ratio of light in the material. Um, if you look in the air, it's almost 1. So, versus a vacuum, air is going to bend light a little bit. Okay, versus water, which is 4 thirds. So, in other words, we're looking at like 1.3. So, that's why when you look at something in water, sometimes it'll look like it's broken or it'll look a little bigger. Diamond is 2.417, so that's why we like diamonds so much. They bend light a lot and it causes it to look like it's sparkling. So a lens is an object made of transparent material that has one or two curved surfaces to refract light. So these are some examples of convex, and so if you remember from our previous video, concave makes a cave, convex is the opposite. All right, so here's an example. We have convex on both sides. Here's an example where we have convex on one side but concave on the other. Here's an example where we have convex and then a plain side. And then here's an example of both sides being concave. Here's an example of one side concave, one side convex, and of course one side concave and one side plain. Um, and so when we're looking at this one, it would depend on which direction are we looking through the lens. So a concave lens, also known as a diverging lens, is curved inward at the center um, and it's thickest at its outer edges. So this would be an example of a concave lens, both of these. Concave lenses cause incoming parallel rays to spread out or diverge. So here's a moving example. You can see those light waves come in and then they spread out. So if they spread out, where is the image? It's where it appears that it came from. So you can see those dotted lines. So it appears that it came from here, even though it didn't really. All right, and then here's a real example where they have some beams of light, and you can see how they spread out um, as they pass through that lens. Concave lenses always cause light rays to spread out, and because that means our image is where the light rays appear to come from, they can only form virtual images. And remember, a virtual image from our previous video cannot be projected onto a screen or a background. The image formed by a concave lens is always smaller than the object. So if you look, here's our object. Our light rays spread out, but they appeared to come from right here. So we have this virtual image that we cannot project. A convex lens, on the other hand, is known as a convergent lens. It's curved outward at the center and is thinnest at the outer edges. So if you look, we have that convex shape that we've talked about. Convex lenses cause incoming parallel rays to come together or converge. So again, as you look, you have those lines coming and then they come together at an actual focal point. So it's where they really meet, so it can form a real image. All right, and so again, here's those light rays and you can see they're coming together right there at that focal point. The converging rays meet at a single point called the focal point on one side of the lens opposite the object. Convex lenses can form either real or virtual images. Okay, so here's an example of our object right here. Here's our focal point, and it is forming a virtual image that cannot be projected. So the object is in between the focal point and the lens, and so we have a virtual image. Whereas, if the object is past the focal point, we can form a real image. And remember, a real image can be projected. So convex lenses can form real and virtual, whereas concave can only form virtual. And then here's just some more examples of those convex 
allowing the rays to come together and the concave spreading those rays out. So light rays are generally unable to exit through the sides of the curving fiber optic strands. If you've ever seen one of those little lamp toys that they sell and it has the little fiber optic strands, if you look at the strand itself, you don't see light until you look through the end. Because of this, fiber optics are very useful for carrying information in the form of light. The critical angle is the angle of incidence that produces an angle of refraction of 90 degrees. Total internal reflection is the complete reflection of a light ray back into its original medium. So if it hits at a certain angle, which of course is our critical angle, instead of going into the next medium, it will actually reflect back into the original medium. So instead of leaving the water and going into the air, it's going to hit the surface of water and reflect back down. That's called total internal reflection. Materials that have small critical angles are likely to cause most of the light entering them to be totally internally reflected. Such materials include diamond and the type of glass used in fiber optics. So again, in diamond, we want to keep the light inside the diamond bouncing around as much as possible because again, that gives up that sparkle and shine that we want when we want a diamond. That's why they're cut in a particular way. So, section assessment. What causes the light rays to bend? Entering a new medium at an angle. Entering a new medium at an angle. Why can concave lenses only form one type of image? Well, remember, concave lenses, they spread the light rays out. So since they don't actually meet at a focal point, it can only form an image where they appear to come from, which is a virtual image. Okay, so it spreads light rays out. What type of images are formed by concave lenses and what type are formed by convex lenses? Well, concave lenses, because they spread the light out, they can only form virtual images. Whereas convex lenses, they bring them to that focal point. Now remember, based on where you are in relation to the focal point, you can form a real or a virtual image. Okay, so concave lenses only form virtual images. Convex lenses can form virtual or real images. And then how is a convex lens different from a concave lens? Well, of course, it would be the shape. So a convex lens looks like this. It's thickest in the middle. A concave, here I'll do a little arrow. A concave lens, on the other hand, is thinnest in the middle. Remember, think about it. It looks like you're going into a cave. How are they the same? Well, since they're both lenses, something they would uh, have in common is they are both transparent, which means it allows light to pass through, whereas a mirror allows it to reflect. Okay, so you could say they're both transparent. You could also say they can both form virtual images because both of them can. Alright, so hopefully now you know a little bit more about the difference in convex and concave lenses and which one form virtual and which one form real images.